Hello everyone, my name is Mandel Mann and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're gonna, you're gonna see me uh, work on a, uh, the back of a chair. Um, I found a chair maybe three or four years ago, maybe even more, and it's just been sitting around and I decided to, to um, just rest, restore it. And basically I was working on the back of the chair. We're going to work on the back only, so keep your eyes open and pay attention because I'm not going to explain everything that I'm doing, and but there are going to be a lot of things that I'm doing that you can pick up on visually um, that will help you in your woodworking journeys. We're going to do some veneering. We're going to straighten out some veneers. We're going to do some um, 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 joining of, uh, of veneers, some gluing. And uh, we're going to make some forms via CNC. And we're actually going to um, uh, cut the chair back form out of this with the CNC, using a CNC. Okay, let's get started. Basically, what I did was I, I cut some forms out of some MDF. And um, I had to do uh, repetitive cuts. So the easiest way was to use the CNC. Um, and... It's less clean up when you're dealing with a, a MDF uh, because MDF gets uh, particles or dust everywhere. So working with the CNC made it a, a pleasure, actually. Um, basically, what I did was um, uh, cut all the forms out, the top and bottom, and I, I made sure that it was um, wide enough. For instance, if, if the, the height of my chair was, uh, the height of the back of the chair was three inches, I had to figure out how many times I need to take a three quarter inch board and glue it up, stack them on top of each other and glue them up and um, make a, a call that was um, at least four inches or four and a half inches in width so I can uh, clamp, give it the proper clamping pressure. And um, so that's what I did. I, uh, um, I clamped everything up and I let it set overnight. And um, I started to uh, work on the chair. I didn't show you how I stripped the chair or anything like that. I just basically want to show you how I used the CNC in order to make the form and uh, actually the back of the chair. Once I finished with my calls, I um, um, I started working on the actual um, back form itself, and I cut that out of um, some two two inch um, white oak quarter sawn white oak, and um, I had that piece of wood for a long time, and it was perfect for this job because the chair was is white oak also, and I found that uh, I think in at some kind of garage sale or something like that. And I just, I held on to it. So it was destiny for these two pieces of uh, material to meet. <laughs> um, so basically I had to cut three pieces um, or three sections of the, uh, the curved material um, out of this, as you can see. And what I did was I drilled um, dowel holes in them um, so I can um, actually uh, stack them on top of each other and glue them without them slipping around. And you'll see that later how I glued them up. So 
sometimes it becomes very difficult when you're trying to keep a form together. And I didn't want to use tape, um, brads, or or pen nails in it because I knew I was going to have to cut it later. So the uh, with three forms, I had to cut on the the inner the insides of the top and bottom. I had to drill a hole on the inside of the top and bottom, but not going all the way through. But for the center form, I drill it all the way through so a dial will go all the way through and connect all three of the pieces together. Using the CNC really cut down on a lot of hand work. Um, you don't have to use any shapers or anything like that, um, spoke shavers or anything like that. I had to do a little sanding, but that's about it. Um, I didn't show you any sanding, but you know, I had to spend about you know maybe three minutes sanding it down. But um, other than that, it really wasn't um, a big problem at all. Once all my parts were cut off the CNC, I started cutting uh, like two inch dial pieces and um, I started uh, assembling the, uh, the actual chair, chair back. As you can see, I was sitting the, uh, I was placing the dowels in the, in the center um, um, curve part and uh, I tapped them until they went all the way through and uh, they were sticking out maybe a quarter of an inch on each side and that enabled me to create this form that you see here. That's the actual chair part. As you can see, um, this makes glue up very easy because they have guides. So there's no slipping around. I don't have to use any brads and they're going to be hidden anyway. Once everything was all clamped up, I started working on my veneers. My veneers were, you know, they were dry and they were a little curled. And so what I did was I started using a, a veneer um, softener. And, uh, and with a veneer softener, what you do is you're just trying to get your veneers flat. So basically I'm showing you a technique on how to flatten these veneers. You, you kind of, you know, douse them with uh, water get them nice and saturated with water and then you place them in between newspaper or shop towels. Um, I use shop towels, sometimes newspaper, the ink kind of runs off and, 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 and goes into the, uh, the veneer itself. Um, 
for this particular application, I just use shop tiles. You can also use um, um, like window screen material, which helps it breathe also. Um, in this process, you have to check on them every day and turn them every day um, and use new shop tiles. They don't have to be, um, you can use the same shop tiles over and over after they dry, but um, so each day that you use it, just take the existing tiles or the old tiles and just sit them on something and let them dry and then kind of put them back on uh, later. So what you see here is me adding weight to it. The weight is important. It doesn't have to have a whole lot of weight, but you just want to put enough weight on there where it just keeps them flat and also it's kind of squeezing the moisture out of it, which is cool. With the help of television magic <laughs> or video magic, um, the veneers are dry. This actually took three or four days to dry. So now what we're trying to do is book match them and we're going to joint them. So basically what you can do is you can get two pieces of lumber and you can join them, to join them on a joiner. And then you have two um, straight edges and you sandwich those two boards together and you can take your, your piece or your veneers and place them in the book match position and you can put them in this um, this sandwich and you can actually run that over the joiner itself or you can use a hand joiner I like to use the hand joiner it's a little safer and as you can see it only takes a few strokes to uh, kind of um, hone in on those edges The gap almost disappeared, um, but I had to do a little bit more work on it um, to make it work the way I like it to work. So I put them back in the clamp and gave them a few more, a few more strokes of the uh, the jack plane. Once I achieve the desired joint that I wanted, I tape them together and then I flip them over on the other side and I use veneer tape on the other side. The side with the veneer tape is going to be the, the side that's on the top side of your piece. You'll see later on. And all you need is a little water and it's activated and uh, you kind of you glue it down on one end and then you pull it taut and then you put, you uh, lay it down on the second end and it'll kind of, as it dries, it kind of pulls in a little bit more and give you a nice tight joint. So once you get your, um, your veneers together you can pull off the yellow tape or the green tape whatever you have and then that's the side that's going to go down on your piece as you see here you're going to need plenty of glue you don't want to starve a joint a veneer joint trust me it'll bubble on you so Put as much glue as you want. Just, I mean, really cover it. That's all I'm saying. Saturate it and put enough on it where you can get a little squeeze out, but not a whole lot of squeeze out. Because it can wind up in your vacuum bag. And that's the purpose of making your calls a lot larger than your actual piece. And this video is really not about veneering, but... <clears throat> This is about just showing you a few things, um, but you want to make sure 
your your scene will be in the middle of your chair if you choose. Um, it just aesthetically look better. You don't want a scene sitting on the left or the side of a, a chair. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> Once you have your packet of veneers and substrate and in your um, your cause, you can go ahead and throw them in the vacuum press. I let them sit in the uh, vacuum press for 24 hours and then I release them. It came out pretty good. There's some flaws in it, but hey, not too many. I cleaned up the edges. I did some sanding work on it, and then I took them over to the table saw. Once I took them over to the table saw, I just kind of cleaned it up and and cut the... Uh, I hit it with the joiner first. I'm sorry. I hit it with the joiner first, and then I came over to the table saw, and then I cut... Uh, the end off to true it up um, and I cut both sides with the table saw so I can have a nice clean um, look. So here's the chair again as you can see I stripped it, I sanded it, I stained it, hit it with some clear coat, redid the cushion and um, you know just made it look good again. My wife likes it she, you know, so uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative to you. And um, there were, I'm sorry I had to cut so much out, um, but it was just, uh, it was about three hours long in video, and I just couldn't get it all down. So um, I hope you enjoyed yourself, and uh, I hope I taught you something. And uh, if you like, hit like. If you didn't like, hey, say why you didn't like it. Thanks a lot, and um, I hope to see you again soon. Bye.